Before we get into the video, make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. I mean, come on, what are you doing? If you're not subbed to me by now, my content is fire from stop motions, news videos, reviews, music occasionally. All my social media accounts are linked down below. And now, let's get straight to it. What's up, all you beautiful souls out there? Thank you for clicking on this video. I have a bit of a topic I want to talk about. As you can tell by the title, this is a discussion video, my thoughts, my theories on the sequel for Transformers Rise of the Beast, and the G.I. Joe collab. We all know by now, it's going to be happening in the sequel, 90% sure it's going to be happening. It would be pretty crazy if they just up and scrapped it for the next movie when that was the big tease at the end of Rise of the Beast, was the G.I. Joe collaboration. So I've been thinking about this for weeks now. The movie's been out for over a month, and this is my thoughts on the G.I. Joe collab for the sequel, how I think it will work, and how I think it should be done for it to be the best Transformers movie possible that just features G.I. Joe. Because we gotta remember at the end of the day, this is still mainly a Transformers movie. This is not a G.I. Joe movie featuring Transformers. No, it is Transformers with G.I. Joe on the side. And I think that is the best way to do this so we don't feel like the Transformers get sidelined the whole movie, we don't feel like they don't get enough characterization, which we even still feel some sort of way like that with Rise of the Beast. Some characters, you know, didn't get a chance to shine, like RC, Wheeljack, Cheetor, Rhinox, that's just what happened in the movie. And you know, there's a lot of concerns out there with fans, me included, kinda, that with the G.I. Joe inclusion, it would be even worse. You know, Stephen Cabell Jr. is talking about bringing back Megatron 2 for the sequels, which in turn would also result in bringing back the Decepticons, Starscream, Shockwave, Soundwave probably too, so uh, you got that going for it. Maybe the Predacons, Maximals will still show up at some point in the movie. And then you still have the looming threat of Unicron and his minions of the Terracons. So that's a lot going on for a two hour movie. I think they should also make it a bit longer this time around for the sequel, maybe two and a half hours this time around, adding an extra 20, 25 minutes to the runtime to really flesh out the story, you know, soften the pace a little bit at times because that was one of my main gripes with Rise of the Beast, if you guys remember in my review from last month, is that <laughs> the pacing at times, while I loved it, it was so much cleaner than, you know, the past few Bay movies we got, but I feel like they could have delved into certain things a bit better and, you know, lengthened the movie a bit to explain that stuff more, you know, the Maximals... Uh, giving characters more time to shine, like RC, Wheeljack, Tudor, and Rhinox. So I think with the sequel, benefiting from around a two and a half hour runtime would really help a lot. And in terms of the Joes in Cobra, I am thinking the G.I. Joes are going to be compromised a bit here in terms of their classic story. I'm not so sure that they're going to be bringing in Cobra in this movie or at all with this version of G.I. Joe within the Transformers universe. What I think they're going to be doing, this is my little, you know, fan theory here, I think it's going to be Sector 7 that sort of holds that Cobra villainish role for the G.I. Joes instead of Cobra themselves. Um, I just think Sector 7 really fits that bill and they already do a lot of the stuff that I think Cobra would already be doing if they entered a Transformers universe where they're also fighting the Joes. So I think what they could do to explain how G.I. Joe is even a thing in this universe is it could be a splintered government uh, organization from Sector 7 that didn't agree with what they were doing at the start of Bumblebee movie with, you know, reverse engineering alien technology, taking alien Transformers and studying them and taking them apart and torturing them and stuff like that. It could be a different government organization that started to rather help the Transformers and help these alien affairs rather than creating more harm than good and destroying them and causing more tension and potentially more wars between the Transformers and humans. So that's how I think G.I. Joe could be, could be implemented into this Transformers universe. Stephen Kappel Jr. also said that 
he wanted a f he wants a few characters from the Joes in the Transformers sequel. So already that sounds like a better idea than just doing full on GI Joe in this movie. So I think definitely Snake Eyes, Duke, maybe Scarlet, maybe Roadblock, and they might throw in a few other, you know, B, C, D list GI Joes. And I don't know if they're going to do Cobra Commander in this movie. I don't know if they're going to do any Cobra-esque villains. If they do go the route of it just being Sector 7 playing that Cobra role for the uh, Joes. Um, I could see them, you know, adding in the extra Cobra element having Sector 7 be separate too. Because let's remember, Lorenzo de Bonaventura still is... Uh, going to be the producer on these movies from what we know so far. I mean, there's limited info on the sequel, but we do know certain things. Lorenzo is more than likely going to be back. Steven Cappell Jr. is more than likely going to be back. And it is... I'm 95% sure they're going to keep it as a G.I. Joe and Transformers collab movie. And... I just think if they do Cobra as well and have to explain that... It is going to be a whole lot. I mean, I just feel like the problem with the Transformers movies is that they always have so many new things to re-explain to moviegoers each movie that it just drowns out the story that they already presented at the end of the last movie. Um, so I just think... I. We just don't need a heck of a lot going on in the sequel. There was already a lot going on in Rise of the Beast that they already established. Sure, I'm not saying you don't have to establish anything else going forward in the sequel. I want them to establish more details to the lore and adding stuff for more spin-offs or sequels or whatever they want to do. Uh, but just keep it, just like lower it a little bit. Don't go crazy. Don't go, you know, off the wall with all these human G.I. Joe characters. This is still a Transformers movie at heart. Um, in terms of the title, I literally just thought about this. It, I, I could literally see the title being Transformers Yo Joe or Go Joe or something like that. That would be a crazy title and really get some headlines stirring about a G.I. Joe and Transformers collab. I could just see it now. Trailer 2025, December, release date 2026, Transformers Yo Joe, June 23rd, 2026. In terms of the technology with the G.I. Joes, I definitely think it's going to be explained that it is going to be reversed, reversed engineered alien technology from the Transformers potentially. Or what they could do is make it uh, some sort of other race of Transformers or aliens that they're taking this technology from to really establish the lore. Because remember, in uh, interviews recently, Stephen Capel Jr. did say that he wants to establish a big lore for the universe in different planets of Transformers and aliens going forward for this new universe of Transformers movies. So I'm thinking they could go either way. It could be reversed Predacon te technology. It could be reversed whatever they want to do, pull from Transformers lore or create their own new thing. Um, there's a lot of different possibilities they could do with this, and I think the future for Transformers movies is very bright, and I hope Stephen Cappell Jr. knows what he's doing. I mean, you know, with the interviews, it seems like he does. You know, he's talking about only bringing in a select number of G.I. Joe characters. I just hope Cobra isn't, like, the main villain. I hope it's Megatron, and... I hope it's still Unicron as the looming threat because remember, they did say that this is supposed to be the setup of a Unicron trilogy. So I just don't want them to steer away from Unicron in the next movie. I still want him to be the big looming threat. I've said this before in previous videos, but I'll say it here. I think the sequel should be Optimus Prime 
uh, learning that Megatron is coming to Earth. When Megatron arrives, it should be Optimus Prime trying to convince Megatron of the Autobots and Decepticons to team up because he knows of the looming threat of Unicron. And, he, you know, the Autobots can't face it alone. And, you know, how Optimus Prime is teaming up with villains for the greater, for the greater good. <laughs> I think that should be the core story. And the Joes should be, like, a supporting military group that helps the Transformers during battles. Uh, but, you know, they could go a thousand different ways. There's so much to pull from Transformers lore. It's going to be really interesting to see what they do because who would have thought five years ago that the sequel to the Bumblebee movie would be about Maximals and Unicron coming to Earth and R.A.D. 2001 Scourge would be the main villain. Like who thought who would have thought that would happen, you know? So they, they could go a thousand different ways with the sequel to Rise of the Beast. I just hope it's a good direction that doesn't go super duper crazy and introducing all these new things left and right in this movie and they just stick to one or two coherent storylines that is a good follow-up to Rise of the Beast. Keeping Unicron as that looming threat, bring back Megatron and the Decepticons, and keep Optimus and whoever Autobots they want to bring in or bring back as the main characters. Hey, Stephen Campbell Jr., if you're watching, you know, you could add Jazz into the sequel, seeing that he's one of my favorite Transformers of all time. Just a thought, my guy. But yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video, guys. Let me know down in the comments below, how do you think a G.I. Joe and Transformers collab movie should work for the sequel to Rise of the Beasts? Um, do you think Cobra should be involved? Do you think there should be a lot of G.I. Joe characters? Do you want them to be kept to a minimum but yeah guys let me know let me know down below and i'll catch y'all in the next video bye